First 72 hours, good, bad, chill, um, well, way? It, it doesn't matter what type of stimulation. Everybody says, oh, family. Day. I always feel that that is more of a, for us to kind of have, stop it, so bother it. But you can, one thing I can tell you, if you see if the family comes in and starts agitating the patient, the ICP shoots up, yes. yes. But uh, also stimulation also helps recovery. Right. You want them to start waking up, you want to stimulate. But again, if you have an ICP monitor and it says it shoots up to 52, tell perfect. the family to stop crying and hugging him and do all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, my other question, sorry, does anybody else have a question? Oh. Um, you were talking, in the beginning you said about the, the early signs of herniation and the only mm -hmm. real one that you said was ipsilateral. Uh, pupil. What about um, like hypertension, tachycardia, da da da, like Cushing's triad, yeah. like they used to teach and all the well, time. Well, that, especially with medications, yes, Cushing's triad, the problem is it's not consistent. Okay. Uh, you know, when you have someone who has herniated, you get the triad and you can say, yes, it happened, but it, it really, from all the signs, you know, especially now with all the medications we put our patients, propofol causing uh -huh. hypotension. And then we get these patients in beta blockers all the time. It's much harder to try and figure out if someone has a cushion stride. Yes, that's the old way of saying yes. You know, it's really look at the nurse. look. <laughs> and, and, and I can tell you, it's 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 the way they used to teach us. Uh -huh. But what they found out is, if you start focusing on those the specific things like cushing stride, cushing stride was from the beginning of the century. That was before monitoring. That was before all these things. But that's the way they taught us. Uh -huh. Like, uh, you know, there, there's a couple, there's a lot of things like, oh, this means something. No, really, it doesn't uh, anymore. You know, now with the CT, all our other concerns kind of, you know, before we used to, the neurosurgeons used to be like neurologists, go and check and everything. Now the neurosurgeons kind of moved away from neurology because neurologists kind of continue doing their thing. Neurosurgeons look at the scan and say, well, you know, need surgery or not. Back then, we had to look for specific signs and symptoms and and you have to be more specific. And what's happening is also medicine is changing. Now we're relying a lot on laboratory. You still have to be a good clinician because your your scans, monitors will always fail, and you have to be able to do things without. Them. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, yes. What's the common uh, pressure elevation with activity? Like if we're going in to work with the patient, what is a baseline for you that activity is appropriate? Yeah, um, when you're working with a patient, if the ICP, and especially if it goes up to 25 or 30, but it's the fluctuations. If, if you're lifting someone and it hurts, the ICP will come up and then come back down. Okay. That's, that's normal response. Okay. Um, I will say if it's sustained for more than five minutes, just back off. Just let the patient rest, and that's when you're going to say, let's you know, come back some other time. Uh, sustained uh, increase of like? To 30. Sustained. To 30. Okay. Sustained to 30 for five minutes. Okay. Greater than 25 for five minutes, that's when I would say stop the activity. Okay. Because if you're doing wound care, rotating the bed, changing sheets, ICP comes up, you finish, it comes back down. Right. If you do everything and it's still staying there, then you need to back off because you're, 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 there's something going on. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.